Inositol and its role against cancer. Hello, it's Dr. Colleen Huber, a naturopathic medical doctor here on October 30th, 2019 in Tempe, Arizona, to discuss with you another very obscure B vitamin, namely inositol, rarely called vitamin B8 and its role against cancer. Here is the spelling of inositol, and you probably do not want me to mispronounce this as I knows it all, because that could be obnoxious. In my previous videos in this series, we have spotlighted a number of areas in this metabolic pathways chart, which we are so appreciative of Sigma Aldrich for making available. We have especially focused our attention here in the mitochondria, essential for life, producer of our energy, and I maintain our very best defense against cancer. Let me review a little bit about the food that we eat. You know, despite the beautiful and tantalizing smorgasbord laid before you anytime you walk into a supermarket with all the different flavors, colors, and fragrances to tempt you, despite all that, we only get three kinds of food. They are fats over here in blue, amino acids from proteins here in red, and carbohydrates up here in green. Now the carbohydrates, no matter what great quality, broccoli, spinach, etc., the carbohydrates ultimately break down to sugar. Here is glucose, fructose, etc., and those sugars have to come down through here, through glycolysis. If you eat a lot of sugars, or bad quality sugars, or worse yet, if you drink soda, you have a flood of sugars coming down here. And then there's one of two things that can happen. Either sugar takes the cancer pathway, coming down over here to make pyruvate and then coming over here to make lactic acid, because that is the job of the cancer machine, you know by now, to take excess sugar that the body could not handle and make lactate. Or we have this pathway, the preferred one, the normal healthy pathway through the mitochondria. Even for stage four cancer patients, most of our metabolism comes through here. And for all of us, we need to do what we can to favor this pathway and to put obstacles in this pathway. So what role does inositol play here? Inositol often comes to us as inositol triphosphate or IP3. Now IP3 is necessary to transport calcium into the mitochondria. IP3 brings calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum, which is a different part of the cell, the same cell, and brings it to and into the mitochondria, which is the engine of the cell. Okay, so what happens with calcium when it gets there into the mitochondria? Well, that will be a subject of a future video in the series, but for now, it does favor the oxidative phosphorylation that we see here at the electron transport chain. The important feature of inositol is that it is essential to bring the calcium needed to facilitate this oxidative phosphorylation. Inositol is also important for this calcium entry to the matrix of the mitochondria because that calcium then activates the key dehydrogenases of the citric acid cycle, which pushes that cycle around and that is something that we really need to have happen. Thus, Inositol is yet another essential part of the picture. What we have to accomplish in order to have thoroughly well-functioning metabolism throughout here in the mitochondria and not over here at the cancer pathway. Finally, let's look at some foods that contain inositol. Beans and nuts are good sources. Bell peppers, asparagus, and eggs are also sources of inositol. Here are some photos. Winsett Farms shows these beautiful bell peppers. Peas and crayons cook this asparagus with cayenne, lemon, and garlic. Well, that is what I have for you today regarding inositol, a little known, often forgotten, B vitamin for mitochondrial health. And the mitochondria, as I've shown throughout this cancer and biochemistry video series, is the best defense that we have against cancer. This is Dr. Colleen Huber. It's October 30th, 2019. And thank you for watching.